Good afternoon and welcome to iNews. I'm Clinton Conkle. And I'm Fariel Khan. We have a really great show for you today, including a healthy cooking segment, a movie review, an inside look at the all new Long Beach City College Theater Academy, and a top 10 hip hop countdown. So stay tuned. Now for our first story, let's head over to the studio where Sean Logan gives us a lowdown on the sci-fi thriller Source Code. Hello, and welcome to this week's movie review, where we'll be taking an inside look at Source Code starring Jake Gyllenhaal. The movie is directed by Duncan Jones and is his newest attempt at a dramatic sci-fi thriller. Jones, the son of David Bowie, received high marks for his critically acclaimed film Moon, which he both wrote and directed. But fans expecting another complex and thought-provoking movie in Source Code will be sorely disappointed. Source Code seems to grab the viewer's attention immediately, but it's repetitive and predictable, leading to a less than fulfilling movie experience that needs a little more substance to be deemed a worthwhile film. The movie stars Jake Gyllenhaal as Captain Coulter Stevens and Michelle Monaghan as his train partner and possible love interest Christina Warren. When Stevens wakes up in the body of train passenger Sean Fentress, he discovers he's part of an elaborate mission to find the bomber of a Chicago commuter train, the first in a set of attacks that culminate in a devastating nuclear bombing. Stevens is part of a new government experiment called the Source Code, a program that allows him to cross over into another man's identity during the last eight minutes of his life. With a second, much larger attack threatening to kill millions in downtown Chicago, Stevens relives the incident over and over again, gathering clues each time until he can solve the mystery of who is behind the bombs and find a way to prevent the next attack. Will Stevens prevail and save millions, or is Chicago doomed to become a pile of dust? This movie had its moments of excitement, but fell short overall. I give the movie two stars out of four. This is Sean Logan for IE News. Thanks, Sean. That looks great. Now our very own reporter Chris Johnson brings us a heartfelt story about a man in need and the person who wanted to help. I'm standing outside of the athletic training facility here at Long Beach City College and right inside the door behind me is a very special man I'd like you all to meet. His name is Charles Dixon and he was born in 1960 with cerebral palsy, a neurological disorder that has rendered his arms, legs and vocal cords disabled. Despite being born with this illness, Charles still manages to make it to the gym every week to work out his arms and legs. We caught up with one of his trainers to talk about this hard work ethic. It inspired me so much because you, you expect so little from him and he gives you all he can. Like He gives you so much, you'll be like, wow, because he do so much. Like, it's, it's just amazing overall. Like, you just have to watch him. This hard working attitude can be seen in all aspects of his life especially in his participation with the community. Charles has managed to stay active through different forms of social media, including Facebook, Yahoo Mail, and other online networks by pecking on a keyboard with a pen clenched in his teeth. Needless to say, I was amazed, but I'm not alone. Many other people also find Charles to be truly inspiring. I was able to talk to a few members of his church community to hear how they feel about this amazing man. I, I learned of Charles, uh, I don't know, I think it was like, like three Sundays after I was here, you know, I saw him sitting over there and I know that he was, uh, a, he stood out in the church because everyone was going over to him, taking him books over there so he can read and go along with everything. He was singing along everything. He's just, he's just, he's just Charles. <laughs> what else can I say? He has inspired me in the fact that uh, he continues to endure even with the disabilities and since I'm healthy and got everything moving and working, then I don't have any reason to, co to complain. So he's an inspiration for me in that way. It's his optimistic and inspirational outlook on life that caught the attention of Jerome Robinson, a member of the community who wanted to help Charles in any way he could. Jerome noticed that Charles's home was not suited to fit the needs of one with such a disability and wanted to make a difference. That's why Jerome started the Wishability Project. I spoke to my pastor about it and I got the idea about the Wishability Project through one of the first things I, I, I researched was the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that is a foundation that provides funding for 
children who are terminally ill. I mean, not funding, but they provide wishes for children who are terminally ill. So if a child has a terminal illness, um, an application is, being, is put in, and then um, what are called wish makers will go to the wish child and find out what this process, to find out what the wish is, and whatever that child's wish is, if possible, the, wish, the um, Make-A-Wish Foundation will uh, accommodate it. Well, Charles doesn't qualify for that. So I thought on it in a while, and that was my inspiration. I decided, well, let's try something, start our own thing, and we'll call it the Wishability Project, as in disability, only wishability. Yeah. And his wish is for um, these accommodations, and he does not have the ability to make that wish come true, but we do. So what kind of amenities does he need in his home to help him with his disability? Well, for one thing, he has a, the bathroom is very small. He has a standard bathtub, and he has to be picked up like a baby and placed in the bathtub um, and brought out of the bathtub when he, whenever he is bathed. Um, they have a s small hoist device, but the bathroom is so small that the hoist can't get in, and even if it could get in, maneuvering would be a problem. So the one thing he needs is a wheelchair-accessible shower. Charles Dixon's constant dedication and hard work has made him a key piece to his Long Beach community. With your help, we can make a difference in Charles Dixon's life. If you're interested in donating to the Wishability Project, you can visit their Facebook and web page listed on the screen. I'm Chris Johnson for IE News. Thanks, Chris. Now let's switch gears and head over to Brandon Jackson in the studios to find out the top 10 hip-hop songs on the chart this week. Yo, what's up? It's your boy DJ B Nice here for KLBC.org, giving you this week's top 10 Billboard hip hop and R&B. At number 10, we have Chris Brown, No BS. Number nine, Fall for Your Type, Jamie Foxx. At number eight, Far Away, Marsha Ambrosio. Number seven, Down On Me by Jeremiah. Number six, Did It On Them, Nicki Minaj. Number five, Make Them Love Faces, Trey Songs. At number four, Six Foot, Seven Foot, Little Wheezy. At number three, Moment for Life, Nicki Minaj. She's on there twice. At number two, All of the Lights, Kanye West. At number one, Chris Brown, Look At Me Now. And I'm Brandon Jackson, here for KLBC.org. And that was the Billboard Top 10. You can catch me on Wednesdays at 4.30, giving you the hip hop and R&B banging in your ear. And you can check me out at www.klbc.org. Or you can check my sister station out at www.kcty.org. Or you can check me at on Ustream if you want to see me at www.ustream.tv backslash KLBCCLB and you can also view KCTY at Ustream.tv backslash KCTYLB and that was me DJ Be Nice reporting for IE News giving you the top 10 you have a good day Thanks, Brandon. Domestic violence is unfortunately a recurring problem all over the world, and Long Beach is no different. Let's go to IE News reporter Deka McLean for a look at this epidemic. Today, I would like to share a personal story with you today about a serious epidemic that plagues the United States every day. Domestic violence is a secret epidemic that is often in the dark, and no one wants to bring it to light. But I hope today is that this problem can be brought to light. Every nine seconds, a woman is assaulted or abused. Also, domestic violence is the leading injury among women compared to muggings, car accidents, and rapes combined. Every day in the United States of America, out of three women are abused or murdered by their husbands or boyfriends. In 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and her famous husband, O.J. Simpson, made headline news due to their domestic violence relationship. Also, just recently, Rihanna and Chris Brown also made news for their domestic violence relationship. And today, 
I would just like to bring this story close to home here at Long Beach City College. So Vicki, can you share with us the current project that you're working on today? Um, well, I'm working on a do documentary that's about domestic violence associated with drug abuse. And if you don't mind, can you share with the viewers the title of your documentary? The title is Sick and Tired of Being Sick and Tired. Wow, that is a powerful title there. Can, do you care to elaborate on why you chose that title? I chose that title because it's a personal experience of mine. I was in a domestic violence relationship and I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. So can you share with the, give the viewers a little example of what you went through? Well, yes. Um, I was 17 years old and I met this guy that I thought was my knight in shining, shining armor, I guess you could say. And um, we was having good times. He was treating me good at first. And that good time turned into a nightmare. Well, my research tells me that the man you were involved with was a little older. Is that true? Yes, actually, he was 14 years older than me. I didn't even know that at first. But yeah, he was 14 years older than me. And then that was something I found out later. Then I also found out that he, sell, he sold drugs, he used drugs, and he was abusive. So just to give you an example of what happened, um, one of the examples is um, we were living together. And, um, you know, like I said, he used the product that we were selling. And I was hiding the drugs from him. And he wanted some drugs. And I wouldn't give it to him. So he decided to start punching me and pushing me around until I gave him, gave him the drugs. So I gave it to him. Well, as a result, I got very angry. He left. And I got very angry afterwards. And we had a 357 Magnum laying around the house that we would use to answer the door whenever someone would come by. Well, I went and got that 357, and I sat in a chair that was near the door in the dark, and I sat there posted waiting on him to come because I had planned on blowing him away. As a matter of fact, today I'd probably be still sitting in the penitentiary, probably doing a life sentence because I was going to probably empty the whole thing on him. Once again, if you're going through this, there is help. See the numbers on the screen. And remember, if Vicki can see her way out, so can you. Deacon McLean with IE News. Thanks, Deacon. After the tragedy in Japan, many different organizations came together to raise money for those in need. Our very own reporter, Kanakash Wadani, met with students from the Japan Club at Cal State Long Beach to talk about what they have been doing to raise money. I'm here at Cal State Long Beach where the students from Japan Club are participating in a fundraiser after the earthquake and tsunami in Japan on March 11th. After the incredible devastation in Japan, many students have gathered together to volunteer their services. Okay, um, this project is going to be very long because a lot of people are suffering from um, their life right now. So. Um, we are kind of um, thinking about other events and um, with other school, and also um, the public awareness is very uh, decreasing right now. So we wanna um, we wanna give people the information about Japan um, more than fundraising and making money right now. So. I spoke to the president of the Japan Club to ask him how the fundraiser got its start. Uh, the decision for the fundraiser actually came after um, the earthquake itself. Um, a lot of people in the neighboring schools were wondering what we could do just as a group and organization together and uh, someone from the Japanese Student Network in Los Angeles along with a couple other schools approached us and asked us if we would like to join in with them and do a large uh, kind of like multi-school level donation event selling something and then from there we decided to do wristbands. The Japanese Student Network, JSN, which is a separate entity that kind of helps uh, Japanese students in the Southern California area and then each school's respective Japanese Student Association then also assists and helps out. So we're all kind of merging together and mixing together. Um, participating in the event we have obviously us Long Beach along with uh, UCI, uh, Northridge, UCLA, uh, UC Santa Barbara, UC Berkeley, Pomona, and uh, UC San Diego. The wristbands themselves, they, they look like this. We have them in white and red. 
They say Hope for Japan on them, which is the name of the project, uh, funded and organized by Students for Japan. And uh, on the back it has a little heart with the Japanese flag. Hmm, kind of red dot there. Uh, the wristbands are being sold for $3 a piece right now at all the schools and all the locations that we're selling them at. We're also selling them off campus individually. The money that we raise all gets pooled together and gets donated to the Red Cross through JSN. Hmm. If you are interested in making a donation, please contact the address listed at the bottom of the screen. I'm Kana Kashiwadani for IE News. Thanks, Kana. That's a great idea for a good cause. Let's head on over to iNews News reporter Chris Johnson, who is sitting down with Professor of Theater Arts Gregory Mortensen and some of his students. Hello and welcome. I'm here with Professor of Theater Arts and full-time faculty Gregory Mortensen um, and a few of his students. We have uh, Chariot Jones, Jennifer Nogawa, Dennis Pearson, and Michael Thomas. Now, first of all, I want to ask you, um, for all of those who don't know, what exactly do you do here on campus? For money, I teach theater arts. <laughs> for fun, I, I chase the rabbits. Uh, actually, I teach acting, both advanced, beginning, improvisation, uh, voice, okay. and direct plays. And uh, I understand that you have a, uh, that the Long Beach City College Academy, uh, the uh, acting academy, it's right. just uh, started. Can you, can you explain? Yeah, I'll elaborate a bit. We've been uh, formulating this for a while now, and we've got the official state approval to begin in the fall. Uh, the Long Beach City College Theater Academy. Theater two year academy, program, yes. guaranteed your AA to transfer to a university. Okay, and uh, I have another question for you. What are, what are some of the biggest challenges you face while instructing the students in the, uh, the art of acting? Well, the ones who want to act through an airplane is always fun. Uh, they have visions of World War II films. Um, actually, it's uh, getting people to get out of the way of themselves. Now, can you elaborate? What yeah, do you, sure. What do you they get that? very self-conscious. They're, they're, they, it's to lose their inhibitions, just to get back to the way they were as a kid, where they just would try anything and not worry about it. Instruct me right now. I'm very, uh, I feel very self-conscious right, are you, <laughs> right now. You're not wearing a Depends, are you? No. Okay. I was going to say, just let it go. That's all right. Um, no, just, you're doing fine. Keep breathing. Okay. It's always the best thing I can recommend. And, you know, another question. How has Long Beach City Theater Department and how is the, uh, the Theater Academy, you know, going to prepare you for your futures? Let's start, uh, let's start with Dennis. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity, just the, the Academy itself. I mean, here at Long Beach City, we're working with people that have been in the industry and are still working professionals in the industry and you can't I've, I've been around to a lot of different city colleges and you don't get that experience most of the time and to have a program like the Academy coming in where you can earn your degree and you can learn all the fundamental skills uh, that will allow you to exceed as an actor or performer I mean it's just unparalleled yeah it's sort of like it's sort of like icing on the cake. I mean, we you know, we already have so much fun here. We're we're instructed, like Dennis said, by such you know a professional staff um, who are all still doing it. I mean, these are, these are all professors who are still out there going to auditions, you know, um, acting in shows, uh, even you know auditioning for movies and stuff like that. And it's yeah. it's wonderful to work with such professionals to the point where you know if I choose to you know audition for some huge school, I'm I'm. I feel confident that I have such professionals on my side willing to help me get to that next level. So, you know, that seems to be a common theme. Like, I find that uh, in a lot of the departments here, there are you know professionals that are willing to help you, and it's very hands-on. And I think that's uh, that's that's what makes Long Beach City like such a good place. I'd I'd come here originally, and I was like, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's Long Beach City College, I don't know, you know, and, and it was, it's been one of the most amazing uh, learning experiences I've ever had here. I think right? that's what a lot of people think yeah. when they come here, but um, the faculty, as far as, you know, in the theater department, we are lucky because they, they, our teachers, you know, Greg, Tony, and Hal Landon, other teachers as well, they care so much about us growing and us learning. That's the bottom line. That's what they want us to do. They want us to leave this school having all that we can know and go out in the real world and try to, you know, pursue acting. And it's great because it is hands-on and they work with you individually, individually and, you know, I feel like I've learned what I have 
in the past few semesters here, having Greg as one of my instructors, professors, <laughs> <laughs> um, that I, I feel confident now going out and trying, you know, to pursue acting, in, you know, New York, LA, like wherever yeah. it is I choose to go. And it's we nice have a, having... We have a, if I may, there's a basic Absolutely. philosophy that, that we're, we're going to try to approach, and that is everybody doesn't even show up their own toolbox. We give them that, and it's empty. And each class, each exercise, each skill they learn is just another tool they can put in that box. And like a good mechanic, they'll take that toolbox anywhere. I don't care if you're on a film location and you're on a play in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, or you know Peoria, it doesn't matter. Acting's acting. Yeah. And, and whoever said there's a huge difference between film acting and television acting and stage, that's not true. Acting's acting. And, and you just know what tools to reach for and, and they'll be ready, they'll be prepped. And that's our goal, practical. Okay, well, I, I just want to uh, talk about, you know, maybe some, uh, some things like, um, what are some superstitions that you as actors have? <laughs> I, I, you know, I hear a lot uh, in high school, all the acting students would tell me, uh, you know, uh, there is a certain play that uh, is just a cursed play. You just, just don't Scottish do it. Play. Uh, the yeah. Yes. Play. You mean Macbeth? You mean Macbeth? Yes. I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. True story. The, the superstition goes that when Shakespeare wrote it, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of time. And King James was uh, at the time on the throne and was quite the student of just, uh, you know, magic yeah. and, and alchemy and all that. And uh, certain books were out. So he pulled from books and incantations that were, quote, real. Mm -hmm. And certain things happen. And it just is not good. It's not a good luck play. Uh, I've been in three different productions, and each time, uh, something's happened, and it's just who knows, you know. That is very, and very weird. The rule is too: you're not. <laughs> oh yeah. Even when you're not in Macbeth, like if that's the play that's not up, like even during Medea, we're not allowed to say Macbeth while we are in the theater. Because things yeah. will happen. Yeah, things will happen. Yeah. Things, yeah. things do happen, yeah. and <laughs> I've I've heard that supposedly. This is what I heard at uh, the high school I went to, that while they were doing Macbeth, the theater caught on fire. So I very painful. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. That sounds about right. That surprises you. <laughs> yeah. Ripley's believe Surprise it or not, believe it. it. Right. Yeah. Well, there's one super set. The other one is you never whistle backstage ever. Yeah. Because at one like, time, why is it? All the crew were out of work sailors, and sailors always uh, had commands from the bosun's mate by a whistle. You always see in the movies, you know, hoist the mizzen main, you know, swab the deck. It's full of poop. I mean, all yeah. that stuff. And it's just not true. <laughs> they did it by whistle, and so if you whistle backstage, some guy who's not paying attention, oh, I gotta drop this stage weight, and down it came and actors would get killed. So you never whistled, bad luck. Never, yeah. bad luck. It's not sound like a good way yeah. to die. No, no. <laughs> he killed in that performance. He definitely killed, and, yes. And even, yeah, yeah, some of us have even personal superstitions, yeah. like uh, yeah, yeah. myself, whenever I am on stage, I carry um, a thimble in my pocket. It's, I don't know why, it's just it started when I was in high school, and when I find I, I don't have the thimble in my pocket, I don't know, it's my, my mind seems to wander more than when it's not. I don't know, it's weird, so. You're thinking about the thimble. It's yeah. his inception, he's yeah. making yeah. sure it's real life. Yeah. 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 It's what's it's happening is happening my token. at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> We're uh, a St. Genesius medal. Mm. It's blessed by the Vatican. I mean, it's just, uh, the patron saint of actors, and that's always, never leaves me. On stage, you're off. Yeah. Well, let's talk about things that you have coming up. Is there anything coming up in the theater yes, department indeed. that we Tony should talk Carrera about? and myself are directing a repertory this summer of deep, scintillating, ridiculous comedy <laughs> uh, called The Course Acting Show, meaning come and see how actors act r very badly. Uh, <laughs> what I'm doing is six-page Moby Dick. Uh, and, <laughs> yes, uh, and a, a nod to Shakespeare called Henry the Tenth, Part Seven. <laughs> a rather obscure work, uh, rarely done except by you know we theater of the bog, yeah. in uh, a lesser known area of Staffordshire. Um, and and Mr. Creo, I believe, is is picking from the other uh, selections from that as well. So there'll be a Shakespeare send up on his part, and a skewering of some famous literary work. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Uh, well. Uh, you know, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you all. You too. And uh, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I know. I was very yeah. surprised when you said you saw it. I killed like, cool. it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's prone to depression. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Well, that about wraps things up here. I'm Chris Johnson for IE News. Thanks, Chris. We really look forward to the opening of the Long Beach City College Theater Academy this fall semester. Now let's head on over to IE News reporter Oscar Alfonso in our studio kitchen, who's going to show us how to make a healthy meal at an affordable price. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of the Health Report. My name is Oscar Alfonso and I'll be your cook today. Well, most of you, as you know, have problems eating salads. Well, one, because you might not have a salad in your bag, in your, what do you mean, in your fridge, or vice versa, you might not like them. But I'm a, today I'm gonna teach you a way to make a simple salad just with some ingredients that most of you have in your fridge or whatever. Just onions, lettuce, tomatoes, salt, pepper, salt, vinegar, a packet of sugar, and yeah, that's about it. Now, most of the problems people have when they cut onions is that they start crying, right? You start crying, it sucks. Well, that's because your knife is not usually well sharpened. So first, before you do anything, before you cut any onion, you gotta sharpen your knife, make sure that it's razor sharp. Now, cut the onion, we're just gonna cut it in rings, easy, easy breezy, nice and easy. So we're just gonna set the onion down. We're only gonna use about half today, and then uh, we're gonna use uh, small, small tomato, just about a quarter. Um, you guys can cut it into squares, into uh, lines, or whatever you want to cut it in. First, um, today we're gonna do it into squares, okay? All right, here we go, that's done. Then what we're gonna use is obviously our favorite ingredient, lettuce. Naturally, if, if you do not have lettuce, you can just leave it with the tomato and the onions, it's still fine. Or you can even spice it up with a little bit of lemon. So now that we have that ready, we can just change here, put this on this plate, put everything here. All right, so I hope you guys are enjoying this. Now remember, careful with cutting, you don't want to cut yourself, it hurts. And since you're gonna be working with vinegar, not a pretty picture. All right, now that we got that down, now to the best part, vinegar. Now careful with your fingers if you have gone cut, because this part, if it splashes on your fingers, yeah, it's gonna hurt quite a bit. All right, got some pepper, some salt, bit of sugar. Just a pinch. If you add too much, it's gonna taste very weird. All right, now to mix it up. Fork, spoon. Make sure you divide the onions. That way they don't, like you don't need a full onion because not a pretty, doesn't taste that good, as good as you would think. You can also add some balsamic vinegar or perhaps even some olive oil. Extra virgin will be the best. Um, and well, yeah, that's pretty much a simple two second salad. Now, if we could get our, our friend Connor right here to try some of this salad for us. Rock that candy shop. If you can come Rock in the picture, yeah, sure, don't be shy, don't be shy. Come here. Rock that candy shop. Come here. Or we can get our senior producer here, Chris Johnson, to come and try some of the salad. Hey, Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good, I'm awesome. Oh, well, no Thanks, Oscar. That really looks delicious. But we have to wrap things up for IE News. Stay tuned for our next show where we will be giving you full coverage of the Long Beach Grand Prix and all of the events it has to offer. Well, that's a wrap. We hope you have enjoyed this week's edition of IE News. There are plenty of opportunities here at Long Beach City College. The radio and television department invites you to join our team. If you're interested in becoming a member of our news team here and produce great television, please call 562-938-4892. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter to get the lowdown on upcoming events here on campus. I'm Ferry Lacan. And I'm Clinton Conkle. And thank you for watching.